All right, so where was the flaw? Where was the confusion? What's your conclusion? Well, what you should have found is that if thread one was running, surprise, surprise, IPC write copy in, which was one of the hint functions, if it was running that, then there was a very suspicious comment inside of there that said, it wants to disallow the moving of receive write K object K label because mock kernel time reports, uh, for instance, mock kernel time reports, the IPC port structure uses the key data union of K object and imp task exclusively. So if you looked at the port, you'd see the union covers K objects and importance tasks in the same K data union. Thus, general use of the K object port as a receive write can cause type confusion in the importance code because the importance code would presumably be expecting an imp task and if it was actually a K object, it would be confused. So what this is saying is this sanity check is saying, you know what, if this thing copying in has a K object in its K data field, then we actually want to error out and not continue any further. So the race condition here is what if this code got through this sanity check and it said, you know what, this thing I'm looking at right now, it is not a K object and it is not K labeled. So I'm going to continue merrily along. But what if right after it finishes that sanity check, the context switches and some other thread goes and runs? And what if that thread calls this fun little function host request notification? So host request notification in a nutshell creates an entry of host notify type, takes the IO bits, which says what type is being referred to in the K data, it says, you know what, this is actually pointing at a host notify type. And so then it points over here. And now it is supposed to, all code subsequent to this, is supposed to interpret the K data field as holding a K object of type host notify. So this function is just a convenient little way for an attacker to change out the type of this object that is being pointed to. And so if after that, the context switch comes back to here, well, the comment told us that, you know, we shouldn't be using a K object thing, but yep, this thing is now going to be a K object. So that means it's going to cause type confusion on subsequent code. And, you know, I didn't give you hints specifically about where it's used because we don't really care where it's used. It's just, you know, this is saying you, if you can successfully bypass the sanity check, which it bypassed it by going through in a form that it is not set, and then race condition its way into a form where it is set, then the attacker wins. And that is the core vulnerability. So what was the fix for this? Well, they took the code. So so part of the vulnerability, which, you know, I, I didn't dwell on, you know, all of the, the ways that um, mock tries to mitigate things like race conditions through uh, mutual exclusions and locks and stuff like that. But you would have seen in the code as you were reading it that every single case in this function has a lock involved in it. And so most of the time they lock the port before they're doing any sort of actions. But here they basically get through here and start, you know, pulling the port out before they actually take the lock. So basically the port is not locked. And so you have an opportunity to get through here and context switch and then, you know, make modifications to the port that would not otherwise be possible if the lock had been in effect. So the fix was take that and move it to the top and get that lock in effect as soon as possible so that subsequently the preemption should not allow an attacker to, you know, preempt in the middle of this and be able to, you know, come in and change out the data that it points at. So that is the fundamental fix, just reordering to make the lock and mutual exclusion work the way it should to destroy the race condition. Now, when I was looking at this, it seemed pretty obvious to me that this, you know, sanity check and the lack of the lock occurring first, when the lock occurred first in every other case, was probably just a situation of the code used to have the lock at the beginning and everything was good. And then the sanity check got added. And that was, you know, probably the developers thinking, well, you should add the sanity check as soon as possible. Always add the sanity check up front, right? Right. That is what you should normally do. But when we get into mocks opportunities for race conditions everywhere that mutual exclusion is not achieved, well, that then becomes a bit of a problem. So I went back and I looked through various diffs of XNU code. And indeed, you know, back in this older version, you would see the lock occurring at the beginning of every single case as it is everywhere else except for this. And then at some point, this particular point, they added in this sanity check. And, you know, the fact that the sanity check has a comment saying, you know, oh, no, we could have a type confusion. We need the sanity check. 
Well, therein lies the irony, because the sanity check, presumably for a past Tycho vulnerability, added a new Tycho vulnerability. This is just another one of those reasons why kernel programming is hard, especially in a kernel like this where you're worried about mutual exclusion and, you know, the opportunity for muck messages to be flying around in parallel because there's so much context about what is going on in the code that has to be kept in the developer's head in order to not make mistakes like this.